So now we've got this plot here and we see that we've got loads of 50 Hertz in there. So how can we use the Fourier transform now to remove these 50 Hertz? So we're using the DFT to remove or manipulate frequencies. So if you look at the at our spectrum again here, so our spectrum looked roughly like this and then it went up again we had another peak here and, and this was here n minus 1 and 0 so that's x of k and this is k so imagine we would like to get rid of these 50 hertz peaks here so that's a 50 hertz peak and that's a 50 hertz mirror yeah so if you want to do this we could just essentially zero this area here and then we're doing a inverse Fourier transform so what we can do is we, so we do just in steps we use the DFT to transform this into the frequency domain then we as the next step we just change the frequency amplitudes As a third step, we do an inverse discrete Fourier transform, and then we've got our our signal back. Okay, so let's do this by um, as an example by removing this 50 hertz here. So the question is now, how do we find our our index numbers? So we know that our spectrum looks like that. So we want to get rid of these. Of these peaks here so we need to find out these index numbers here so we know in terms of of normalized frequencies here this is for example this should be 50 divided by 200 and um, and so now if we want to have if we want to have the index number here we just we just um, to get the number here we just need to multiply this with the number of elements here so we just have 50 divided by 200 multiplied by n and then this here this is essentially n minus 50 divided by 200 multiplied by n and we are getting to this point here obviously ideally we would like to or we need to zero out a certain region here so we're starting a bit earlier and a bit later here in frequency wise and um, also remember MATLAB starts at index index 1 and not 0 so we need to shift everything by one index number so now let's um, create these these MATLAB commands to filter out the 50 Hertz so let's first define our lengths here from YF yeah, so that's, that's our total number of um, samples in the frequency domain and so now let's just define with N1 our region here let's call this here N1 and then this one here n2 but define this as a as a vector here which is just covering this region here with center frequency of 50 hertz and we start with 45 and end up end here with 55 hertz so let's do that okay so n1 so it's now getting a bit more involved here so round of 45 Hertz divided by 200 so that's our sampling rate multiplied by n and then we go up to 1 plus round I just round divided 
55 divided by 200 multiplied by n. So, and then we do the mirror. Remember, so the mirror is 1 plus and then length of yf. Well, actually, no, we have defined this as n, so we don't need to do this. And then minus round of 55 divided by 200 hertz multiplied by n and then we just run that up to 1 plus length from yf so reverse order and then we're subtracting the round from 45 divided by 200 hertz sampling rate by the length so let's hope I have not done any problems with bracketing here. So now the only thing what we need to do is we set our frequency range to zero and we also do it for the mirror. Yeah, so now, now both are zero. So hopefully if we are plotting this here then our 50 hertz peaks should be gone in the frequency domain yeah so we don't see uh, so we don't see any peaks anymore here so we just see the signal so now what we do is we do an inverse Fourier transform let's just do this do this like this oops typo so inverse Fourier transform and so now we see our results here we see that the tiny complex numbers here remaining this is just numerical these are just numerical imprecisions and so therefore we need to take the real part of the signal here if we want to plot this properly yeah so let's call this here y2 and um, do the real part of our inverse Fourier transform here of yf oops bracket missing so then let's plot that so now we hopefully got rid of the 50 hertz so let's zoom into our ecg here a bit and we see already that the signal is now clean and the 50 hertz is gone so there's just a bit of probably muscle noise or something like this but the massive periodic component we had before is completely removed and now we have a nice and clean ECG signal.